episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology with your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger. Today we're talking about how to best parent your Aries child. We just wrapped up Aries season and we're now officially in Taurus season. So I thought it would be a great time to go over kind of the best advice that I can give you, high level advice about parenting your Aries child so that you have the best, strongest parent-child relationship possible. Before we begin, please uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel for your free regular positive parenting with astrology content. Also, if you know any parents of Aries children or any Aries adults who would find this information helpful, please feel free to share this video. I get a lot of feedback and emails from adults who have found my videos helpful, um, especially if they're like me, kind of they're adults reparenting themselves from childhood trauma while learning how to parent best parent their kids. And that's very gratifying to hear that. So feel free to share this video to any Aries parents or parents of Aries children that may find it helpful. Now, are you the parent of an Aries child? Do you sometimes clash with your Aries child? Would you like to kind of get a handle on and understand where they're coming from a little bit better? Then this video is for you. So first we're gonna talk about, uh, give you an overview of Aries energy. And then I'm going to give you um, some positive parenting tips about how to best parent your Aries child, depending on the specific energy that Aries is all about. So first, Aries is associated with the first house. It is all about the self. I am is a phrase most uh, associated with the sign of Aries. Now, Aries is ruled by the planet Mars. It's one of the planets that's closest to Earth. So what we call one of the personal planets that has uh, the most effect on the chart holder's personality and outlook on life. So if you remember your Roman mythology, you'll remember that uh, Mars was the god of war. And that tells you a lot about the Aries personality and Aries energy. They're not necessarily violent, but Aries people tend to attack life and attack their goals head on. It is a cardinal energy sign. And if you remember cardinal modality means that the energy is always moving forward intent on advancement intent on achievement. It does. It's impatient. It does not like to be stagnant. Okay. So that very much exemplifies Aries energy. They attack life and attack their goals, which is ultimately a good thing. It is also an energy that feels compelled to assert itself on the stage of life. It is an ego oriented energy and we'll talk all about that. Aries is also, as all the fire signs, a masculine energy sign. So unlike feminine energy signs, like the water signs, the earth signs, they kind of approach life more from a place of feeling and intuition and sensitivity. Aries is about action. It approaches life from the point of view of what do I need to do? What action do I need to take? Aries can feel very intensely, all fire signs can, but that's, that's kind of the, how the energy is directed. It's more of the masculine get up and go, let's achieve things than the feminine energy, which is more internally focused and kind of more emotion driven. Aries women tend to be very tough and very, they're very good at self advocating. If you have an Aries woman who has a lot of, maybe a lot of air or a lot of water in their chart, that will be tempered. But most of the Aries women I know are very tough and can more than hold their own with Aries men. And they're very good at self advocating and they're very good at advocating for their kids. It's one of the best qualities of Aries people, in my opinion, that ability to self champion without caring about whether they're offending other people. So being a fire sign and being the first sign of the Zodiac, the sign most associated with the self and the phrase I am Aries children have a ton of energy. So the problem, the issue that parents always need to remember, not problem so much as issue, is that fire, if it's not directed and channeled somehow, the fire tends to burn uncontrollably. I don't like to say, I don't like to suggest that parents control the fire energy because I don't like to suggest that parents should control children or control children's behavior. That's not what I teach. However, parents should help the child to learn how to direct and channel the fire energy into something productive because otherwise it, it has the real possibility to become destructive. And obviously that's what you want to avoid. A great way to channel that energy is through physical exercise. I mean, all kids need physical exercise, fire sign kids, even more so because they are just there. They have so much energy that they're just about to combust. So when I talk to parents of fire sign children, 
who are like in an irregular exercise program, maybe they do karate or soccer or football, the parents tell me, oh yeah, the kids usually are in a much better mood after they've done the sports for the day. And that is very much the case. So they need to burn off that excess energy. Aries people have an intense focus. They attack life intensely. I love that. It is an extroverted social energy. You could obviously have an Aries sun person or Aries moon person that tests as an introvert. I have not found any one indicator in the birth chart that can denote whether the chart holder is an introvert or an extrovert, but Aries energy tends to be extroverted. It tends to be social. And one of the things I notice about fire sign people, including Aries, is that they tend to have like an entourage of people around them. And as I've said in other videos, fire is the only element that cannot exist by itself. All the other elements uh, can exist on their own, even if like like Earth, obviously Earth is if Earth is not watered, you know, it will die, but it can exist without the water. But fire cannot even exist without air. So that is that's something to keep in mind that fire sign people really need to be around others, whether they test as introverts or extroverts. And Aries people tend to have like an entourage around them, or they at least tend to have a lot of friends and be social. So the first kind of big thing we're going to talk about is the ego oriented nature of Aries. Fire sign people, Aries specifically being the first sign of the Zodiac, have a more challenging time putting themselves in the shoes of the other person. It is not necessarily a bad thing to think of yourself first. I am a big advocate of teaching kids to self advocate, talk, you know, uh, speak up for themselves. I don't call it talking back because that denotes something negative. It's more of having a conversation, especially with older kids when they self champion, including with the parents, then you can have a dialogue about what's important to the child, right? And why they, they may be opposing whatever it is the parent is suggesting. So fire sign kids, uh, I don't really worry about them self advocating too much because they do it naturally. The thing is, it is more challenging for them to put themselves in the shoes of other people. One thing I hear is, for example, an Aries person may think that if something's not a problem for them, it's harder for them to understand why it may be a problem for someone else. The extreme of other, other end of the spectrum of that would be Libra energy. Libra is the opposite sign to Aries. It's an air sign. Libra is very uh, relationship oriented and Libra people tend to prioritize the needs of the other person in the relationship over their own needs. Obviously that is not always emotionally healthy to do. You should always take into consideration the other person, but you should not continually make your needs subservient to, or last priority to the needs of other people. You should not suppress your own needs continuously so that the needs of others can be met. You should obviously strive to have your own needs met too. So, but Aries doesn't have a problem doing that. The uh, thing they need to work on is empathizing with the other person and understanding that just because the Aries person sees it one way, it does not mean that everyone else is going to see it that way. To that end, parents of Aries children should not criticize the children for being ego oriented. Because as we know, when kids are adolescents and then teenagers, the way their brains are wired, they are naturally, I don't want to say selfish, but they are naturally ego oriented. That's just how the brains are developing at that age. So with Aries, you may see a little more of that. They may present as you may even think it's selfish, but in actuality, they're expressing the energy of their sign. And they're also a space stage of normal development for that age. So you should not criticize them for that. Instead, you can say things like, you can prompt them to think about the other person and any natural consequences of their actions. Tell them things like, okay, well, you want to do this. How do you think your friends would like it if you did that? Or I see you want to do this, or you treated your friend like that, or you said this to your friend. How would you feel if your friend said that to you? Or how would you feel if somebody treated you like that? You can ask open-ended questions and get them to think about things without telling them, oh, you're selfish. Why would you say that to your friend? Or you were mean to your friend. Okay. Cause that doesn't really help them understand the behavior and the natural consequences of their actions. Aries children as all children should be allowed to stand up for themselves and talk back, including with the parents, as long as they do it respectfully. If they're not respectful, you can tell them, Hey, I want to listen to what you're saying right now. You're not using respectful words. So can you please rephrase that or even 
why don't you go and take a break and read a book for a few minutes and then after you've calmed down we can talk about it i'm not saying we can't talk about it i'm not saying you can't express that to me but i'd like you to calm down first because we really it's hard for us to have a reasonable conversation unless we're both calm you can say things like that right if they're getting very worked up fire again very emotional shows a lot of emotional intensity especially about when they're defending themselves and you can do that and and encourage them to speak to you respectfully using respectful tone and respectful words but not suggesting that 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 you don't want to hear what they have to say and to that end do not punish your aries children if they do not want to share especially if they're on uh, the younger side like under age seven you know kids around four and five they they're just starting to kind of figure out the concept of sharing i don't believe in forcing kids to share one because that sets the stage for them to as adults think that oh well i i'm obliged to share if somebody asks me for something i have to do it if somebody asks me for money i have to give it if somebody asks me for whatever um this thing i have that they want i have to give it to them because i have to share right you may not necessarily see the connection but if a child is conditioned like that repeatedly they will act out those behaviors later in their adult life and obviously we want our kids as adults to stand up for themselves and not let others take advantage of them so don't criticize your aries child for refusing to share instead you can say well okay maybe it's not a good idea to play with x toy in front of your friend if you don't want to share it with her so let's find something else to do or when you're done with that i'd like you to let your friend have it you know when you're done playing with that and maybe give your friend another toy for now to play with so there are things you can do instead of forcing the kid to share when they don't want to and by all means uh praise your ears child when they stand up for the, your, themselves and when they stand up for other people for example if they feel like they're a friend was treated unfairly and they're standing up for their friend tell them you know i love the way that you defended your friend that's fantastic you're a very loyal individual aries are very loyal people definitely praise their loyalty i love the fact that you stood up for your friend i love the fact that you stood up for yourself i love the fact that you expressed your needs those things should be positively reinforced okay kind of the second big thing aries children are extremely independent they like to do things for themselves okay parents mostly moms we naturally want to protect our kids however as the kids get older when we don't let them do stuff that they want to do that gatekeeping can have negative effects you don't want to handicap your child by telling them oh you can't do this or it's too dangerous you know for example i've talked to parents of eight to even 12 year olds they don't want to let their kids cut anything in the house like help chop vegetables even though the kids want to all right that's that's kind of being a little too overprotective in my opinion if an eight to ten year old is capable of chopping a vegetable with adult supervision they should be allowed to do it with a knife maybe a special knife that's a little extra safe or something like that but they should be allowed to do it you're you don't want to handicap your kids independence and you should be giving them as much age-appropriate independence and age-appropriate say right and what happens to them as possible so what what you should not do is tell the kids you can't do that that's too dangerous or just you can't do that because i don't want you to do that if it's appropriate for them not to do it by all means explain why it is just way too complicated whatever for an eight-year-old to do right now but you always want to encourage them to do things taking the proper precautions instead of just telling them no you can't do that it's too dangerous and anyway aries children respond very badly when you say things like you can't do that because they're so stubborn that they would be the type to be like well now i'm gonna do it because you told me i can't or that's too dangerous so the, those kids are going to respond badly to that but if you explain to them how you know the precautions they need to take to do something right then they'll be much more likely to do it and then follow the precautions that you're giving them so i'm going to give you one example my son who if you watch his channel you know is a scorpio son he has an aries rising uh he's uh very much um very much a leader shows a lot of leadership qualities uh which is a great thing but when he was i guess eight or nine he he was already an avid swimmer always loved the water he swam no problem in the pool there was a diving board and it wasn't too high but he wanted to dive off the diving board 
And the lifeguard said, well, because you're, I don't remember how old he was, under a certain age, you have to take the swim test before you dive off the diving board. Well, the part of the pool where the diving board was, was like 10 feet deep. And he's like eight or maybe nine years old at the most. And so he said, can I take the swim test? So he took the swim test. He had to swim from one end of the pool to the other end of the pool and back without his, without having his feet touch the bottom. And the lifeguard said, you pass so you can, you can jump off the diving board. And I told him, I said, look, the diving board, you see the water underneath it is 10 feet. You're, you're so, you know, small because of your age, you may dive off because the diving board was not that high. You may dive off and not hit the bottom to propel yourself back up. You're going to have to swim to the top. And I'll be honest, I had a lot of trepidation about that. Uh, but I told myself he wants to do it. He took the swim test. He passed the swim test. There are two lifeguards here and I'm here. It is very unlikely something bad will happen. At the worst, I will jump in and pull him to the top at the absolute worst, right? Um, and at the worst, maybe he'll be freaked out and just won't want to ever do it again. He dove off the diving board, he swam to the top and he was fine. And he did it several times. But the way I was raised, my mother was a huge gatekeeper. She would say, you can't do that. You can't drive there. You can't drive to the city. You can't drive on the highway. It's too dangerous. It's too dangerous. And that's the mentality I grew up with thinking, I can't do this. It's too dangerous. Instead, I had to teach myself, okay, there's some risk involved here, but if I take the precautions to do it, this will be a fulfilling activity, not necessarily driving, but maybe other things. So. I'm trying to teach my son to, to do these behaviors that may involve some risk, but to take the proper precautions. And that's what I'm telling you to do with your Aries kids. Okay, the third big thing is that Aries children, they tend to react instead of respond. I've talked in other videos about fire energy where fire energy tends to act first without thinking and then they're faced with the consequences and then they're forced to deal with the consequences. A calculating energy like Capricorn and Virgo and even Gemini and Aquarius, who they're very detached and always processing information, they will think about all the possible outcomes of this one action, and they will weigh the pros and cons and look at all the possible, all the possible outcomes and data, and then they will make a more calculated decision, especially Capricorn and Virgo, very calculating. But Aries will not do that. Aries will act and then be faced with the consequences. So if you're a parent who has a lot of earth or air in their chart, that may be frustrating to you because you may think I see the consequences miles away and my child seems like, even though they're older and more mature now, they seem like they didn't even think this was a possibility when I knew this was a possibility like right away. That's just the nature of the sign. Aries is not a detached energy like air. The first line reaction of Aries to situations is to feel intensely and act immediately. They are very impatient and immediate action is what they are all about. So when they react, maybe overreact emotionally to things instead of responding, how do you do with that? Okay, so first, the most important thing is the parent has to model proper response to the Aries child. The parent has to refrain from overreacting emotionally. I've seen these dynamics where you have a, a parent with a lot of fire energy and an Aries child. And it's just like the Aries child overreacts, the parent overreacts. And all of a sudden it's like these flames burning up and everything is just burning out of, and out of control. Okay. The onus is on the parent, the adult, the more mature one with more life experience to model calm, appropriate response and behavior to the Aries child without yelling, without acting dramatic, without overreacting emotionally. Yes, it is difficult. Yes, it is challenging, but good parenting is hard. So you've got to model that for your kid first. Okay. Because if you cannot control your behavior, if you cannot control your emotional overreaction, you cannot expect your Aries child to do that. So that is number one. If the Aries child needs to calm down, you can say you need to take a break, not a punishment, I can see you're very upset about this. I can see you are, you know, not calm. You're about to overreact. You have the right to your feelings. Take a break. Maybe go outside, kick the soccer ball around for a few minutes. Maybe punch a punching bag. Maybe punch your pillow. Take a break, not a punishment, not a timeout. Take a break. When you've calmed down, I've calmed down. Let's talk. Okay. So that's the first thing to do is the parents got to model that and remain calm for the child. 
Okay. Second is, is you got to teach them to articulate what they're feeling because they have so much energy and they're feeling intensely. It's hard for them to articulate sometimes what they're feeling. So you can help them with that. You can ask them questions. You can validate emotions. Like we've talked about several times in this channel, say you have the right to feel that way. I couldn't totally understand why you're upset and angry right now. It's normal to be angry over that. If they are able to articulate and identify what they're feeling, they will feel a lot less frustrated with those intense feelings. And also to the, to the point that Aries tends to act first without thinking, as I always say, the best teacher in that respect are natural consequences. If they overreact with a friend and the friend kind of doesn't want to play with them anymore, nat natural consequence. You could tell your child, look, if you're mean to your friends while you're gaming or you're mean to your friends while you're playing, or you know, you're know you ultra competitive to the point that they don't really want to play with you because it's not fun, they may not want to play with you anymore. If they're not having fun with you, and if you're overreacting with them, they may not want to play with you anymore. Again, natural consequences. Now I will say, Aries people, including Aries kids, are very loyal, like we said, and because they have this kind of propensity to act first without thinking, they just act, they're very quick to defend the people close to them. They're very quick to defend the family and friends, even before knowing whether the family and friends are in the right. They're very quick to defend their people. I love that trait about the sign. It goes to that, what we were talking about earlier about Aries people being very good at advocating for themselves. That is definitely a trait to celebrate about the sign. So make sure you're praising your Aries child's good qualities. You're very loyal. I've noticed you're quick to defend family and friends. That's all great, right? Those are great characteristics to have. The next thing we're going to talk about, as we kind of intimated earlier in this video, Aries children have a ton of energy. It can be very difficult for them to relax and slow down. So make sure they're burning all the energy off, physical exercise, outdoor activities, hiking, horseback riding, sports, especially outdoor sports. All that stuff will be very helpful. And parents should do those physical activities with your children. Kids, especially boys, bond through competition and physical activity. So if the parents can participate in sports with the children or participate in hikes or horseback riding or whatever with the children, that goes a long way toward bonding with the children. Even if you're not talking that much, the fact that you're doing the activity together and that you are there, that speaks volumes to the child and the child will feel like, wow, I'm worthy of my parents' attention and company. Aries definitely likes kind of external stimulation. A sign like Scorpio, that's a fixed sign and a water sign is more internally focused. Aries, as we said, attacks life and everything life has to offer. They like exploring and they like the external stimulation. So all those types of activities we're talking about will be great. Okay, Aries kids are big risk takers. That is part of the nature of fire energy, especially Aries and Sagittarius. They are also uh, prone to be adrenaline junkies. If you have read about uh, childhood development, especially where teenagers are concerned, you will know that teenagers' brains are heavily wired to seek dopamine, and that is largely why teenagers do crazy adrenaline-seeking things that to adults just appear off the charts. So that is definitely a possibility with your Aries teenager. You will need to have frank discussions with them about risks, both in the physical world and in the online world. You will need to have frank discussions with them about online predators and the danger of certain online communications and things like that. I don't think you're doing your child a service by just ignoring that stuff and pretending like it doesn't exist. As soon as they're old enough to understand, you need to talk to them about it. Obviously, you don't want to make them paranoid, but they are going to come into contact with inappropriate stuff and you're going to have to address that with them. If you address those issues when your kids ask them of you and you address them with no judgment, you're just explaining stuff, then your kids will be much more willing to come talk to you when they encounter something that's weird or something that's negative or inappropriate or something that just makes them feel intuitively off. And obviously that's what us parents want. We want our kids to come talk to us if they have any questions or they just intuitively feel that something is off or weird. Aries children are natural leaders and they do best when they are in charge of themselves. Now this can be obviously the source of some parent-child conflict 
where the Aries child wants to kind of take over and be the leader and the parent says, well, yeah, but I'm the parent and we have ultimate say, which is true. Parents are still the adults. We have ultimate say, right? And especially if the parent has a lot of fire in their charts, this can really be a source of conflict. You can expect to hear statements from your older Aries children like, you're not the boss of me or don't tell me what to do and things like that. That <laughs> Those are probably statements teenagers would make in general, but with Aries children, they may make them even younger than the teenage years because they like to be in charge of themselves. And truly, the parent is not the boss of the child. That's not the relationship. It should be a mutually respectful relationship where the parent is the adult, but the child has as much age-appropriate say in their world and independence as possible with the guidance of the parent. So how to manage this trait? One is that you find activities where the Aries child can naturally take on a leadership role. That could be anything. It could be sports, it could be debate, it could be whatever the child shows a proclivity or in, for or interest in. Also, give your Aries children many opportunities to have input in family decisions, to have a say in what happens to them, have a say in what sports they do or what activities they do and things like that. The more say kids have in what happens to them and kind of their world, the less angst they will ultimately have because they feel like they have some control. No child wants to feel completely out of control, like they have no control over what happens to them and no say in their world. That's a prisoner, okay? That's not the relationship that I'm teaching you. So make sure that you have an open line of communication, dialogue with your Aries child. You can have, one thing you can do is have regular family meetings and you can go over kind of any administrative business that you have to talk about, scheduling, things like that, vacation time. And then you could open the floor and say, does anybody have anything they want to talk about? Does anyone have any complaints? My son will get to the point where he would call a family meeting because he had some complaint. I mean, so give them as much say as possible. I'm not saying you have to act on their complaints necessarily, depending on what they are, but just letting them express complaints or anything else to the parent without, show, without the parent showing any judgment is is very important and it works wonders and that's like half the battle letting your child express themselves is half the battle and many times once they've expressed themselves and kind of asserted their autonomy especially with an independent sign like aries they'll feel better because you've permitted them to express their autonomy with no judgment so when you're giving guidance to your aries child make sure the guidance you're giving them is from a place of love and compassion. It's not a place of you must obey me and you must do this. They won't respond to that well to that anyway. The more you try to control an Aries child, the worse your relationship with a child will be. You should not dictate what they should do. You should not demand they do something unless it's super important. And there may be times that that's the case. And also, if you give them advice, make sure that you don't express displeasure when they don't follow your advice. Well, maybe you should do this for your paper, and if they don't do it, don't criticize them or express displeasure or make statements like, oh, well, now you're not going to get an A because you didn't do what I told you to do. Let them be in charge of themselves. And again, let them deal with the natural consequences, including grades. If you want to have influence on guiding your child, not control over them, influence in guiding your child, the best way to do that is to make sure you have a strong relationship, mutually respectful relationship with your child. It's not by controlling them and laying down the law. It's by creating this relationship where they feel comfortable talking to you and they feel like you value them and they're worth your time and attention. You can give guidance when they ask for it and when it's appropriate. And the next big thing we're going to talk about, we've hinted at this before, Aries people are incredibly impatient <laughs> and for signs like uh taurus fixed earth scorpio fixed water this could be very frustrating right because you may work at a, maybe a slower pace a more calculating pace you may want to weigh all the pros and cons before you make decisions and take actions and aries doesn't do that aries children are the type to like when you're telling them oh you can you please do this they'll take the action before you even finish the sentence and they won't you know, do exactly what you said because they didn't hear you. They didn't stick around long enough to hear the entire explanation. Again, you know, natural consequences are a great teacher there. And Aries kids being impatient, they hate waiting. They hate it when people talk slowly or walk slowly, okay? So with kids, obviously, you know, kids have little patience anyway. You can't really expect 
7 to 12 year olds to like sit for hours, especially boys and especially fire sign boys. Remember to always validate emotions. I know that waiting is hard for you. Why don't you re read a book? We'll find something to do while you wait. You can read a book. You can watch this show. You can do stuff. Let's go take a walk, right? While we wait for this or while we wait at the doctor's office or while we wait for our food or something like that. Let's play a word game, something like that to pass the time, you know, so they're not like super impatient and then giving you a hard time, right? You know, you can say, would you like to listen to music or read a book while you wait? And if they say no, just respect that. And then what I would do is say, hey, would you like to read a book or listen to some music while you wait? No. Okay, no problem. Well, here's the book. If you change your mind, the book's right here. You can take it. That's it. Don't force them to do it. And the last big thing we're going to talk about goes for all kids, especially for Aries kids, because they are so headstrong and so independent and have this, you know, propensity to attack life and assert themselves on the stage of life, which are all great characteristics, do not refer to your child as difficult or challenging, especially where your child can hear you. If you need a moment with your partner and it's just the two of you and you're talking and you and you say, you know, man, it's, it's difficult dealing with, you know, my kid because of blah, 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 or because our energies are just so different. If you're, and your kids, you know, your kids can't hear you, that's fine. Like you have the right to vent. I'm not saying otherwise. Please, when your child can hear you, do not call them difficult or challenging because the child hears that they are somehow defective. If they hear the parent call them difficult, they are hearing that they are defective and there is something wrong with them. They are not difficult. Maybe your energies are so different. Your personalities are so different that it takes you more effort to understand that them. That's fine. That's completely understandable. Also, when I hear people call children difficult, 99% of the time, what I'm hearing is that child doesn't just comply without question. That child actually thinks for themselves and that child actually um, self champions and advocates for themselves. And that's what I would want children to do, right? I worry more about the kids who are compliant and obedient without question than the kids who are difficult and who speak their needs. So make sure you're not using those kind of negative connotations to describe your children. Mostly, I mean, especially where they can hear you. So that that's the thing. You don't want them to think, well, my parent thinks I'm defective because the parents are the ultimate advocates for the child. And if the parents are calling the children, their own children defective, then the kids will think, well, wow, well, nobody will love me. If my parents think I'm defective, then I'm defective. I'm not a worthy individual. And you never want your child to think that, right? And with a very headstrong, independent energy like Aries, which tends to be ego-oriented, the, the propensity to call them difficult, think about them as difficult and hard to parent, or it's so hard being their parent, that propensity is very real and you never want to, you want to make sure you are never suggesting that to your child. You want to make sure you are always praising their good qualities. Positive reinforcement works so much better to encourage those good qualities than negative reinforcement. And I'll leave you with this. One of my main goals as a parent is to raise children who are not easily coerced or controlled, who think for themselves. And that's part of what I teach here. Now, that's all for today. Um, thank you for watching, and we'll be back with more content soon. Again, if you like this video, feel free to share it with your uh, Aries friends and your uh, parents of Aries children friends. And uh, if you have any questions, please comment below or email me directly, and my email's in the comments. Thanks so much.